Rewilding is a long-term, hands-off conservation strategy that emphasizes restoring and protecting natural processes to encourage a healthy, self-sustaining, and biodiverse ecosystem. Prior to colonization, the land cover in and around today's Detroit consisted primarily of various types of wetlands and prairies surrounded by beech maple forest. Many of these natural communities are considered critically imperiled today. Currently, Michigan has less than 1% of the prairies it had in the 1800s. Due to urbanization, 80% of the Detroit shoreline has been developed and 42% of its land cover is impervious. These surfaces do not allow water to penetrate, and examples include rooftops, concrete, asphalt, and compacted gravel. But not all permeable surfaces are efficient at infiltrating water. Non-native turf grasses have shallow roots, and modern lawn care compacts the soil, lowering its capacity for infiltration. Natural areas have a lower runoff coefficient, meaning they soak up more water. Due to climate change, heavy rain events are now twice as likely as they were a century ago. Detroit has seen an 11% increase in total annual precipitation from the 1961 to 1990 average to the 1980 to 2010 average. Most climate models predict this increase will continue. Due to the increase in precipitation and the aging sewer infrastructure, flooding has become a major problem in Detroit. When heavy rains happen, the sewers can't handle the volume, and this results in backups in streets and homes, as well as dumping untreated waste into the river. There are huge areas of vacancy across Detroit. Vacant lots range in size from large, connected former industrial sites to single-family home plots, and many of them are gathered in hot spots across the city. Most of these areas receive little management more than the occasional mowing, which continues to lower their infiltration rate. These sites provide an opportunity to increase natural green space for recreation, stormwater management, and improving native biodiversity. Managing vacant land as natural areas will help keep water out of the sewer system, lowering the risk of flooding while creating habitat to support biodiversity. So how do we build healthy ecosystems? Nature builds ecosystems through succession. Succession is the process by which the assemblage of species change over time. Typically, succession moves from grassland to shrubland to mature forest, unless interrupted by a disturbance. Each stage prepares the land for the next step in the process. We can use succession as a guide to build healthy ecosystems on vacant property over time. One of the biggest processes performed by succession is preparing the soil. Soils play a huge role in the health of an ecosystem, and urban soils can have some problems to overcome. Buried construction materials, like concrete and cement, leach over time and raise the pH of the soil. This is an issue because many plants struggle to grow in high pH soils. Since decomposition releases acids, increasing organic matter in the soil will decrease the pH over time. Compaction caused by non-native species and mowing can be addressed by planting native perennial forbs in grasses. Allowing these plants to grow without mowing or with reduced mowing allows their deep roots to aerate the soil. Years of urbanization and industry leave soils burdened with heavy metals and other harmful pollutants. Phytoremediation is the process of using plants to clean and detoxify contaminated soil. Some plants have the capacity to absorb heavy metals, oils, and other chemicals. Of the plants used, some hold on to the pollutants and need to be removed after time. 
and some break them down into less harmful substances that are then released into the air or the soil. Green infrastructure is a strategy that mimics nature to manage stormwater. Here are a few basics to get you started. Bioretention gardens are built wetlands that use plants, soils, and microbes to infiltrate and treat water. They can range in size from a single garden bed to a full-size pond. Installing a bioretention garden increases the infiltration rate of a site, provides habitat for beneficial insects and semi-aquatic vertebrates like salamanders and frogs, and serves to beautify the neighborhood. Bioswales are vegetated trenches that infiltrate, filter, and slow water movement. By connecting a series of retention gardens and swales across your site, you can create wetland complexes that have the capacity to hold, move, and filter millions of gallons of water. The size and arrangements of lots can help guide a design. Single lots provide an opportunity to retain stormwater, support native insects and pollinators, and can even provide income through cut flowers or medicinal herbs. Combining multiple single lots increases the opportunities. Adjacent lots provide the area needed for a retention pond or for a native fruit or nut orchard, while linear arranged lots have potential as a greenway or animal movement corridor. Gathered lots or large industrial lots stand as the best option for natural area management. They can serve the community as a natural recreation area while providing habitat for birds, deer, frogs, and other animals. Large gathered areas have the potential of being used for sustainable lumber production or for grazing land for livestock. Succession management is a strategy that embraces the long-term nature of ecology. So let's take a look at how it can improve vacant land over time. Here we have a series of vacant lots. For 10 years, native forbs and grasses have worked to remediate the soil. Unmowed wildflowers and grasses provide habitat and forage for native insects and birds. Bioretention areas have been carved out to hold water during wet weather. After 50 years, the road has been removed to connect the natural area with another one developed across the street. Hardwoods have begun moving into the open space, and the bioretention areas have been expanded to accommodate more water. People use this space for recreation. In a hundred years, a fully formed hardwood swamp has developed. It holds and filters a million gallons of water per acre, and provides habitat for all sorts of waterfowl and other wildlife. A smaller residential lot at the end of a block provides opportunities for community and economic development. Native grasses remediate the soil to make it safe for agricultural activity. These tall grasses also provide habitat for beneficial insects and birds like pheasants. Hickory trees are planted, and in 50 years, they have regularly been producing a crop of nuts for the past 30 years. The areas under the trees serve as recreational space for the community and habitat for plants, insects, and birds. After a hundred years, some of the mature trees are cut down to sell for lumber, and small trees are planted to one day take their place in the canopy. The neighborhood has grown, and a playground was installed under the trees, creating a shaded area for play. Climate change and its impacts on Detroit are a complicated web that require multiple solutions. Using succession management to improve vacant areas across the city will increase their water holding capacity, provide a refuge for wildlife, and increase community access to natural area recreation. So let's rewild Detroit.